here with Cindy Pankoff and we're going to talk about getting ready to make your metal clay ring. So there are some really important steps to the process, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so when you're working with metal clay, um, which is made up of silver particles and it has some water and organic binder so you can work with it as clay. But during the process, we're going to be letting it dry. The water is going to evaporate. When we actually get to the firing part, the binder is going to burn off, and those silver particles are going to heat to a temperature where they're physically going to bond onto each other. And because of all of that, we'll end up with fine silver, but we're going to lose a little bit of size along the way. OK, so anytime you make a ring, especially with metal clay, you want to make sure it is going to fit when you're finished so you can wear it. Absolutely. All and right. that's a really important factor because there's some really, really minimal differences between sizes, which I'm going to show you in a sec. So we need to be sure that when we're, um, when we're doing this, that first of all, you have an accurate measurement of your finger, okay. um, and then that we actually form this thing in the right way. So as far as, um, as, far as sizing your finger goes, you can use anything from a, you know, an inexpensive ring sizer to a fancy one if you happen to have one, or you can go down to a local jeweler and ask them to check out your finger for you um, so you have that measurement. Um, and once you have that, then you have to calculate kind of backwards the shrinkage for that. Okay. Um, one thing to keep in mind is there are a lot of variables between how this is going to be fired um, and the brand and type of clay that you're going to be using. Um, in, this, in this particular case, I like to go with a little bit of a hotter firing, which we'll get to. It's about 1575 for an hour, which is going to make us have to make this two sizes larger than your finger. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to show you these two different mandrels. This is called a stepped mandrel, and you can see that it actually looks like it has little stair steps on there, which means that each size is a perfect cylinder. And that's important for making a ring because we want the sides of the ring to be parallel to each other, as opposed to a tapered mandrel, which I have here, which are a lot easier to find, um, but your rings, if you're forming the wet clay on that, are going to... Oh, it would be tapered too. Exactly. So we're going to be working on, this, on, the, um, on the tapered mandrel, and I have, I'm going to be making this for a size 4 finger, so I need to go up two sizes to make it as a size 6. Okay. To get set up for this, I need to put something on there so I can get the ring off easily. If you formed it on there, it could very easily just bond itself right on, and that would be a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to put a little paper barrier on there to make it easy for me to get the ring off later. All right. Um, this is a self-adhesive note, an extra large one, and I went ahead and drew on there um, a line down the middle of a little, of a little strip, and that's going to make it easier for me later to be able to um, get my ring on there straight so it's not wonky. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm going to cut off some of the excess paper, because if I have too much paper on there, it's actually going to change the size of the ring that I'm oh, forming. Right. It's a it's very touchy. You want it to keep is. it slim. Um, actually, even to do a half size different, it's just one extra revolution of paper would be a half size different. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this around. When I get that on there nice and straight, and make sure that my lines align with each other. And because I'm using the self adhesive note, it's going to stay put on there long enough for me to couple of cut a couple of little skinny strips of tape and I'm going to put those right over the seam area, one on each side. And I'm just going to grab this other mandrel here so you can see I've got one that's already ready to go. Um, and notice that my tape is not sticking to the mandrel. I can still move that little, the little sheath of paper off and I've got my little line and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on there. This is just a hand salve or olive oil so the ring won't stick later. And that's our prep. And then we're ready. Okay, so when yeah. we come back in just a sec, we'll make our ring. Finally, yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> we are back with Cindy Pankoff, and we are ready to make this clay ring. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, well, what we're going to do really quick, firstly, uh, we want to get an estimate on the circumference of the size of your, your ring. So I'm just, I've got a little scrap of paper here that I have circled around. I put a little mark, and then I put another mark that's a half an inch away from it. And that is going to be really important for doing estimates in a minute. All right, so when the clay first, um, when it first comes out of the package, you need to add a little bit of extra water to it because we're going to be doing a lot of manipulation. So we want to be sure that that clay has enough moisture in it before we get started. So after you take it out of the package, if you grab a piece of plastic wrap and 
pop it in there, and then just add a little teensy bit of water to it, and you're going to work that in. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time doing that, but you do need to do about five turns. Make sure that water is nice and incorporated in there. All right. <laughs> we like uh, that. Yes, absolutely. I've got two, uh, two setups here. I've got one for rolling a snake, and I've got one for doing my regular clay. I'm going to start out by um, working on this ungreased snake rolling board. It has a little bit more texture to it, so it helps the snakes grow. And then I have this acrylic um, roller, which is actually flat. There you go, so you can get your perfect size. So I'm just going to go back and forth with this until I have my little handy scrap of paper here until I'm about that length. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a smush, set this aside, and then I'm going to switch to my regular work surface. And now I'm going to roll this out to be seven cards thick. Okay, and that way you know you have enough move, room for your impression, right? Absolutely. So I'm just going to go over this until it doesn't grow anymore. So I've got my seven card thickness there. And then I'm going to add these onto my stack here. Um, where I'm at now is I have 20 cards thick. Now the reason that is so thick is I have to compensate for my mold, which was 17, plus I have three more cards on top of that. Advanced math here. I know. So now I'm going to take the I'm going to take the clay and I have it so I have the fancy end toward me, and I'm going to put the clay on here so just a little bit is um, sticking off the end. Okay. And then I'm going to lay that down on there because the clay is going to creep away from me. I want to make sure I capture all the detail on the part that's up front, so that's why I'm scooched a little bit that way. And this part's very important: one firm roll only. Oh, you don't want to do it more than once. If you go back and forth and the design can shift and you can end up getting a, a double. So roll with confidence. That's right. So I'm going to do one nice solid roll. And you'll see the clay kind of creeping along. That means I'm doing it right. And don't worry if it sticks to the roller. That's not a problem at all. I just make sure it doesn't get all the way around and stick to itself. Okay. Then you're in trouble. Then you've made your ring. Exactly. <laughs> Probably bigger than you intended. All right, Looks so good. now you can see we've captured all the detail from that, um, from that original spoon, and it's still perfectly intact. So now I'm going to trim it out. I'm using this really, really teensy little needle tool um, to trim around. Not all needle tools are created equal. All right, so make sure you have a very fine one. Yep. And now I'm just going to go around with this tool, and I'm going to trim a, just slightly outside the design. And that's so when I go to sand it later, it's a lot easier for me to sand up to the line. Without losing any of your detail. Exactly. Sorry, I can't talk and trim at the same time. I understand. That looks good. So now I can take all the excess clay, put that away. Okay. This is all going to go back in my little piece of plastic wrap, and I'm also going to trim this off. I've got my, my handy little scrap here also, which just happens to be the size that I need. That's how much clay I need to do my size ring. So even though this looks like a little junky scrap of paper, it's actually a really important measuring tool for us. Yeah, you want to be set up with that before you start. Yep. So I'm back to my mandrel, which we have all set up, and I'm going to take... I'm going to take this, I'm going to take that, that little bit of an end, I've got about an uh, eighth of an inch overlap, so I'm just going to smash that down on there, that's going to help hold this in place, and the line that I drew on there is going to help me hold this and make sure I get it on there straight. A little bit of water, teensy little bit of syringe on there. So that's just using, you're using that kind of like glue to hold your two pieces together. Yep. And then I'm going to tack that down. Looks good. Now it's ready to dry. Okay, and how long do we let it dry? <clears throat> let it air dry for a few minutes. Um, once it's kind of holding its um, shape, then you can pop it onto a, a candle warmer or something like that. Um, it works a lot faster. Once it gets that skin on it, let me show you, I have one ready over here. Um, you can take this whole paper, which is why we're using the paper in the first place. I can slide that whole thing off and pop it on the dryer for about 10 or 15 minutes until that gets nice and dry. Okay. And then, 
this is a little tricky, little tricky bit here. Um, in order to get this off without breaking it, if you grab the paper on the inside, and you kind of think about a roll of wrapping paper, how you coil it. it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And because then it's still pretty fragile at this point, it's right? It's like a little potato chip ring. And then I can pop it right out like that. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to check it out, check my seams, see how they're doing. Um, right now, I have a little bit of reinforcing that I need to do in there so I can go in with some syringe. Um, it's always best if you put just a little touch of water on there before you start and let it soak in. And that's going to kind of hydrate the dry clay so the moist clay will stick to it. Okay. Put a little touch on there, smooth it out. And then I'll set that aside to dry again. Great. Then after that, I'm ready to start sanding. Do you do a lot of sanding before you put it in the kiln? You want to make it look as good as you possibly can before it goes into the kiln because there's um, whatever, however good it looks before, it's going to look even more refined afterwards. So if you have a flaw, it's going to be magnified later on. So we want it to look really good. Absolutely. So I just I kind of want to show you a little comparison here um, between two, one that's been sanded and one that hasn't. So at this point, I would spend a lot of time refining and sanding those edges and making it look fabulous. But since we don't have time for that, I have one that's ready to okay. go. Um, so I'm going to take my, um, my ring pellet, which is designed for firing, and it's a little bit smaller. It's my finger size. I'm going to set that up so I can pop it in the kiln for $15.75 for an hour. And then when I take it out, I'm going to remove that pellet, and then I can do some polishing just real quickly to show you um, a satin finish. Yeah, That's so you can see the shine it. really come out. Absolutely. So you have your fine silver right there. Absolutely. It looks beautiful. Thanks. Well, let's take a look at your samples here. There are other ways that you can use this technique, of course. Yes, and that's what I really like about it, because once you've made your mold, you can use it a multitude of different ways. Um, I've got an example there where I molded the same piece twice so that I could get a symmetrical band. I put a prong setting in to put in a gemstone. You can even use it to make necklace components or bracelets. Yeah, the necklace is a really beautiful idea, too. So kind of taking that same molded shape, but using it in a completely different way. Yeah, and you still have your, your vintage pieces totally intact, patina and all. All right, and so when you are sanding it down, how long would you say it takes to file away that silver finish? When you're doing the polishing? Sorry, I'm polishing, yeah. It's really quick. And if you want it super shiny, you can put it in a rock tumbler for an hour, and then you'll have glistening, sparkling beautifulness.